Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Do you struggle to paint backgrounds? Well today I want to share with you some tips on painting one particular background element that I've had to paint hundreds of times over the years. Flowers. Whether they're up close and the main part of the painting or whether there's hundreds of them dotted throughout the background of a painting, that's what I want to share with you today. I hope that you find this helpful and that you enjoy my videos. Please do hit that subscribe button here on YouTube. It helps me a huge amount to keep making these videos. And then if you'd like even more tutorials, do check me out over on Patreon. I'll add links in the description below. I paint a lot of animal portraits and wildlife so I've got to admit most of the flowers that I've painted have been in the background with the main job of enhancing the subject and setting the scene. But I do enjoy painting flowers close up too as I get to crack out all my most vibrant pastel colours. In this video I want to show you some of the big differences between painting a flower that is close up with lots of detail and hundreds of flowers from a distance. The key is in simplifying what you see and knowing that sometimes less is more. Let's start with the close-up of the flower and I'm going to show you one of the individual little flower heads now to demonstrate what I mean. So by zoning in on one area here I can really show you the entire build-up right across the flower repeated using my colour choices from dark to light. So when we've got nice direct sunlight like this, where it's casting light and shade, I start with my shadow tones first and I can exaggerate those. So I'm coming in there first with BV15. This is BE19. So not quite as bright as white yet. So we've got areas of light and shade on the petals. And this can also mean a difference between colour temperature. So in the shadows, we've got cooler tones. And then in the warm sunlight, we've not just got pure white, but we've got some warmer tones in there too. So I also make use of A33. And you're going to see a very similar colour palette build up on the far away flowers, which I'll show you after this short demo. And it's using the same colours. But in this one, I'm actually looking at each individual petal and I'm thinking about how the light is affecting that. So it's quite laborious when you try to paint something realistically. With this little demo, I tried to be quicker than usual and not put quite as much effort into each individual petal. There's a much more realistic style than how I've painted this. And I'm really playing at the moment with how little I can add and just really focus on my colour choices. So even though this one is quite detailed, I'm trying to work pretty quickly and just block in the main colours. So even though it's a white coloured flower, you can see that I'm using a range of colours, not a huge number of colours, but a little range of colours leading me from the shadow tones, from that darkest tone on the flower, BV15. And I'm just adding some little patches of sky through the gaps there. So this is much more detail than my next example where it's more like a huge bush filled with flowers like this. And when you're at a distance from them, 
there are many ways that you can speed up the process and paint much less detail to get the overall effect. But in each case, it's the colour choices that really matter most. And I love painting white things, whether it's a dog or a white windowsill or some white flowers. You always get such a range of colours on a white object, especially when it's being hit by direct sunlight. So a little touch of warmth in the centre of the flower. And of course we've got some nice details in the centre of the flower, which I'll come back and do at the very end. But you can see how I'm really just blocking off each of the petals in terms of light and shade. And I'm also bringing in BV3, a slightly more lilac tone. And really saving pure white for the brightest areas. So when I'm painting something up close, I'm thinking about the edges. If I want a crisp edge around each petal. I can also make use of the blue from the sky to shape the outer edge of each petal. But I'm using the white here to find the shape of that last petal on this flower. And again, little areas of sky showing through. So with this one, it takes a little bit of effort and care to apply the pigment in the right areas, creating some nice crisp edges. And then I can make use of a pointed blender like this. I can soften some of the layers of colour. They will start to mix together a little bit. But it's quite a lot of work for each individual flower head in something like this. I certainly wouldn't want to be painting an entire background area of bushes or trees covered in these to this level of detail. But of course there are more painterly, quicker ways to capture something and that's what I want to show you in the next example. And I can also use my fingertip like this just to soften some of the colours. And like I mentioned, using the blue sky colour, I can very accurately shape the outer edge. So a few finishing details in the centre of the flower where it comes out into the light here, just creating that little tip with a small piece of white or grey 28 in unison terms. And just a few little finishing touches. This is A18. So each of these flowers needed this amount of attention 
And for even just a small piece like this and not working it up to a very high level of detail, it is quite laborious to paint details. So quite a lot of time is spent creating individual bits of detail in this type of flower painting. And I want to show you now the contrast between when I'm painting this level of detail or when I'm trying to create more of a blanket of flowers in the background of something. So this in contrast was a really large painting, full body of two dogs and a huge area of garden right behind them with these extremely beautiful flowery plants. I'm not sure if you would call them bushes. They seem to have very long grasses growing between them. And again, I'm starting with a very similar colour to before. Grey 8 there. Very similar to the previous BV15 I was using. And again, I'm doing a similar process here. I'm blocking in any shadow colours that I can see. And then coming back and looking for those brighter highlights. So in this case, each petal gets maybe a second or two of my time. Some areas I'll come back and shape a little better. But it's a much quicker process because I have many of these little individual flowers to paint. You can see an area just to the left that I've finished. And I'm really trying to find a shorthand method to representing these flowers in the background. In this case, I'm happy for them to not have very much individual detail, as I want the detail in the animals in the foreground to stand out more. So in this case, my flowers are definitely more of a background, something to complement the main subject. So I'll show you some of the flowers at the top here. I'm also bringing in warmer tones like this warm brown earth. This and the grey eight are the first colours that I'm coming in with, just finding the general shape of the flower. And I'm moving much quicker across the picture here. I'm not staying too long on one flower. In fact, I'm blocking in a large area with my base colours and then I'll take a sweep back over that with some highlights. So I'm working larger areas all at once. Unlike when I'm painting more detail and I'll stick with one area for longer and work on that detail. So if you're trying to either loosen up or just paint some background elements that don't try to take over from your main subject. Keep moving across that area. Don't get too involved with any one part of it. But again, similar tricks here. I'm using the blue sky color to just clean up an area. If I make a little bit of a mess anywhere with the darker values, it's always easy to clean up with the surrounding colors. But again, just general shapes, blocking in the general shape of the flower. And I'm pretty sure that I didn't paint all the flowers from this in exactly the right positions. A lot of the time you're trying to take inspiration from the photo, but it's not vital for absolutely every flower to be in the right place. So again, coming in with my highlight colours. I do have grey 28 or pure white. Again, white things are so interesting to paint. Of course, you might get pure white in there, but you're guaranteed almost always to find a huge range of other colours. So 
So again, these neutral additional colors from Unison. Very useful when painting white things. So similar colors to the previous flower that I showed you. But quite a different method. I'm using the pastel stick here to make an entire petal in just one or two marks from the pastel. So using the broad marks that you can get from the bigger sticks. And then you can barely see it in my hand here, but it's a small pebble of grey 28 or pure white. So I'm just moving right across the flowers. And usually the last thing that I'm doing is coming back in with these brightest bits of highlight. Being a bit more suggestive with those bits, not too concerned about following the photo reference exactly. So a bit further along in this painting and I thought I would show you just another little area of flowers here. The same as the white ones on the left side. But I'll also show you a couple of these rich pink coloured flowers as well. So everything in this style is really built up from big chunky marks and big dots from the pastels. And actually to paint something that's far away I'm using bigger marks than if I were painting something that's up close and detailed. So that's often a good way to look at it. The further away something is from you, the bigger your marks should be, so the less detail you put in. So with the pink colours just the same, my process with this type of background is to use the green areas around the flowers. So all of that foliage and tall grasses to kind of plot out where the flowers should go. And you can see that as I go, I leave little gaps in the paper for the heads of the flowers. And I do that because I could just fill it all in with the green stuff and then add these flowers on top. But for white flowers especially, I want those highlights to ring out really brightly. And I don't want to dull my pinks too much either. So by leaving these little gaps in the foliage, I can apply these more bright or vibrant colours on clean paper that isn't already tinted with a dark green. So this is the final piece. Even though I went into less detail and was a bit looser with the flowers, it still took me ages. And of course, you can paint even more loosely than this. There are some styles of art where you're really suggestive with your marks and you can tell a whole lot more with a whole lot less. But for me, this is how I differentiate between things that are detailed and up close and things that are far away. In both of those examples, the contrast in colours to create light and shade is what's key. Decide how much detail you want your flowers to have. And as I said, that's often determined by the actual scale of the flowers in your painting. If it's a less detailed blanket of flowers, then remember to keep moving and don't get caught in one place for too long. I hope that this video will give you some confidence to tackle either a flowery background or a more close-up flower study like these. And if you'd like to paint either of these along with me, then do check them out in my tutorials library, which is linked to Patreon. But you can browse all of the tutorials that I have available in my library before you even sign up. So do check it out. And also if you're interested in watching some of that Golden Retrievers painting, I also have that big series in my library too.
But I really hope that you enjoyed this shorter video here on YouTube. Please do hit subscribe to me here and check out all my other playlists. I've got lots of these shorter videos, but then also some full length tutorials here as well for you to try out. But thanks very much for watching this here and until next time, happy pastling.